is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello there and welcome back. Chapter 3 opens with Don Quixote meditating about the book mentioned by Sancho. The narrator underscores the temporal problem while also giving us indirect access to Don Quixote's delusions of grandeur. He could not persuade himself that such a history could exist for the blood of the enemies he had slain was not yet dry on the blade of his sword, and yet they already wanted his chivalric exploits to go about in print. Don Quixote is also disturbed by the Moorish status of the author. From Moors, one could not expect any truth whatsoever because they are all tricksters, liars, and swindlers. He worries that the author might have written something against the modesty of his lady Dulcinea of Toboso, or perhaps misrepresented his own faithful decorum. Don Quixote has always kept at bay the impulses of his natural passions. Remember Mari Tornes? She can vouch for Don Quixote's ability to control his natural passions, right? Did you know? In the first part, Mari Tornes was a prostitute. According to the Christian narrator, her client was related to the Arabic narrator Side Amete Benengeli. In the midst of these worries, Sancho and Carrasco are suddenly present. In spite of his name, Sanson, meaning Samson, is described as small in stature, about 24 years old, and having a round face, snub nose, and large smile, all signs that he was mischievous in nature and fond of pranks and jokes. Carrasco immediately plays with our knight, throwing himself at his feet and swearing by his bachelor's robe, by the habit of St. Peter that I wear, that Don Quixote is one of the most famous knights errant that ever was or ever will be anywhere on the face of the earth. He also praises Tidia Mete Benengeli for having written down Don Quixote's great deeds, as well as the Christian narrator for having taken care to have them translated from Arabic into our vernacular Castilian. Note that if Don Quixote does not trust Moorish authors, his more immediate problem is a false neighbor. Who is Sanson Carrasco? A. A short, mischievous man. B. A tall, strong man. C. A fat, romantic man. Correct answer. A. A short, mischievous man. In fact, Carrasco represents a range of problems. We are only at the beginning of chapter three and Carrasco's commentary highlights the mind-boggling mise en beam structure of the narrative that we have seen elsewhere. We assume that Cervantes is the author, but others are involved, the Christian narrator, Cide Amete, and presumably another Morisco translator. To top it all off, we now have Carrasco, a character inside all of these narrative frames who claims to have already read the first part of the novel. He does more. He notes that the novel has been printed in Portugal, Valencia, Barcelona, and Antwerp. And he even anticipates the future when he observes that there will be no nation or language that will not have its translation. Evidently, as we can also gather from the dedication of 1615, by now, Cervantes knew very well that he had written something amazing. There were already at least nine editions of Don Quixote Part One, and it had already been translated into English and French in 1612 and 1614, respectively. That's all for now. We'll see each other in the next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.